I'm excited to introduce you all to my friend, Leslie Herod. She's the first out black person elected to the Colorado legislature and the current chair of the Black Caucus. Leslie is doing the most, clapping back at folks who are trying to block progress. We dish about what it's like to be the only one in the room. So you and I go way back. I feel like we've been babies in the LGBTQ movement together for at least, I think about you, over a decade ago. Um, was it when you uh, were working for the foundation, the Gill Foundation, the LGBTQ Foundation out there in Denver? I think that's when we met. Yeah, yeah, and you were doing big things, starting initiative at uh, CAP as well. And I remember being there with you and being the only like queer black voices in spaces very often. Um, mm. But really great that you were there with us, you know, having these conversations. Because I got to tell you, it was quite scarce at the time, but that's changing. <laughs> Well, you know, speak to that, though. We are celebrating Pride right now. And, you know, we both have had our feet in the LGBTQ movement. And as a black uh, woman who identifies as black, identifies as a woman, um, who also is a lesbian, I would love for you to speak to us um, about that intersection and kind of for you, what it's been like for you in the movement as you have grown and now as an elected official, really just kind of working on all the issues at the intersections of identities. Yeah, well, I think it's really interesting. So I'm the first African-American LGBTQ elected person in Colorado, or should I say openly LGBTQ person elected in Colorado. Um, and coming in as the first always has its weight. But one thing that's been really important to me is that I was not the last or only. And so in the time that I've been elected since 2016, I've made sure that more Black queer voices have come onto the scene, including other elected officials, which has been you know, a huge honor, really. Um, but the reason for that is because the issues that we have to focus on have to go beyond uh, marriage. They have to go beyond kind of the white cisgender male movement, gay movement, and really center on, um, on communities of color, on intersectionality, on those voices that are often underheard and underserved. You know, as elected officials, I think it's our duty to think about intersectionality. And quite frankly, if we're not at the table, people don't. You know, so how are LGBTQ people impacted by the pandemic and workforce shortages and workforce development, education, criminal justice? Those are all things that we have to focus on. And quite frankly, they should be integral in the LGBTQ movement. So are you telling me that there really is a gay agenda and that that agenda might look differently than some of us think it looks <laughs> as a black person? <laughs> Yeah, I think there absolutely is a gay agenda, and it goes beyond brunches, right? The gay agenda is being led by, quite frankly, Black queer people. You know, you've got Malcolm Kenyatta doing his thing. You know, you've got folks around the country who are really saying, um, we are Black, we are queer, and we are setting a much broader LGBTQ agenda than people have realized. And that's really important, you know? That's what we need to do. And so I, I'm, I'm loving, I'm loving the intersectionality and really bringing Black queer voices into the movement. Mm. You know, when uh, I was at, when I was uh, leading the Victory Fund, we always talked about representation matters. And the whole intention was to diversify the out LGBTQ elected officials all around the country. And I'm so proud that you uh, were elected. Is this your second term now? Third and, uh, term. This is your third term in the, in the Colorado House. Uh, and so you are there uh, representing for all of us and bringing more voices to the table. I'd love for you to speak a little bit about the landscape of just policy um, around the country and, you know, on a state by state basis for LGBTQ people. Where are we? Yeah. Well, we've come a long way. I mean, when you were running the Victory Fund, you came in and I got to tell you, those rooms are pretty white. You know, there were a few of us that weren't, but it was a pretty white movement. And I think what you brought in was a conversation about how we can expand that movement. You know, one thing that I've really focused on is criminal justice reform because and policing. Because if they're shooting and killing us in the streets, you know, how are we supposed mm -hmm. to thrive? You know, do we even think towards things like marriage or, or non-discrimination in the workplace if we can't even walk on the street? And I think that is an example of an issue that we really do need to work on as a movement. I appreciate you highlighting for us that being LGBTQ is not just for white people. When I was like coming out or understanding my sexuality and my sexual orientation, I had no idea that lesbians were black. And so me liking women was not about being queer or being lesbian or whatever, because that really wasn't for us, you know? And that's really changed. And I think a lot of that is because of media and the depiction of actual black queer voices, which is so important. But, you know, I always say that it's, 
I identify as a black woman first, you know, I walk into the room as a black woman and that's, that's also a, comes with privilege, right? Um, I am cisgendered. And so that's how I show up. Um, and so one thing that I wanted to work on was the crown act, but in a really intersectional way, because I was inspired by young girls, black girls who are just like me, who were told that they had to straighten their hair or change their appearance in sporting activities and in schools. And that was just wrong. And I realized I could do something about it. But then as I went to visit some of these schools, I saw so many queer folks expressing their identities, queer kids, through their hair, through their hairstyles. And that was something that I really wanted to make sure that not only we tolerated, but we embraced. And so being one of the first five states to pass the Crown Act was really monumental to not only for adults, but for these young people to allow them to express themselves as whoever they are. If you didn't know, now you know. And remember, you met her here first. My girl, State Representative Leslie Harrod, is a rising star and one to watch. You didn't see the half of it. So I'll post my full interviews with each guest on social media soon. So be sure to follow me at Aisha Mood Mills everywhere.